What's up? Welcome to Sweathead with Mark Pollard. I've got Julian Cole here today. What's up, JC? Not much. Glad to be here. We're getting the team back together, getting the band back together, mate. Uh, I missed you. I thought we were married before we yeah. left uh, Brazil. We spent a lot of quality time together. And it's funny seeing you in video because we are doing this in, in video. Sometimes my face is a bit shy, but it's good to see your face. New York to LA. Yeah, given that given that freelancer connection vibes over here mate we're not we're not lonely you know lone wolves by ourselves are we mate we're connected mate, by the zooms no i'm not a lone wolf i've always got my words to return to as well jc they're my friends very true uh, for those who don't know what this is this is an a version of something jc and i are doing called live action strategy we've done four on the internet so far and probably another three or four uh, at events in different parts of the world. And what we try to do is, is take a brand, some kind of business issue, some kind of audience, and we try to get to a simple or simplistic, but simple creative brief and comms plan, or at least the structure of a comms plan, the scaffolding in 30 to 40 minutes. And we do that because we love what we do. This is a hobby. We believe that to get good, you've got to practice. And then uh, JC, you also believe that um, that it's great. It's great fun. It's kind of like good. I think it, what it shows is like, it's great to riff a strategy with someone else. Cause I think a lot of people try to go away and do it by themselves, but doing it with you, Mark, or doing it with another strategist is you just get to answers faster and newer thoughts. Yeah. And I was, I was, I was, I was reaching for your sound. I thought there was a sound bite in there about how the, uh, strategy slash planning industry can be a bit cloistered, a little bit protected and, and sometimes scared, you know, it's competitive. I get it. And you don't know if you've got an idea till you've got an idea. And then someone else might say, that's not an idea. You suck, which could be happening to us right now. But part of yeah. what both of us have loved doing for over a decade is sharing our toys helps us get better. We feel, uh, and, and knowing that other people think they might have more to risk while learning. Uh, I don't know we get kind of get a kick out of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's also nerve wracking. Like I put out a piece um, last week, which was like this get to buy that I'll probably talk about later. But I was so nervous putting that out because I'm like, oh, this isn't my lane. Like I shouldn't be doing this. And then I put it out and most people loved it. And then someone actually came back uh, from your community and actually helped me write a better um, get to buy. So I was really thankful for that. All right. Well, we can talk about that too. Uh, we are doing the Strategy Supersize Omega Class. We have a URL and it is www.strategymegaclass.com. You can find that on the internet. We've done New York twice, Chicago, LA, London, Sao Paulo. It's been a pretty amazing year, dude. What sort of stuck with you most from these, I don't even know what to call them. I mean, we can call them mega classes, but they're kind of more than that to me at least. What stuck with yeah. you? Um, I think the connection that people get of meeting other planners and kind of connecting and finding a whole, like, I think you've said a room full of like-minded individuals and a lot of people just don't get that chance. And so one thing that I definitely underestimated is the, like the connection and net, not networking, cause that sounds so lame, yeah, yeah. but the way that people have like met people and friends after it. Um, has been massive and like the happy hours that we have just seem to be like such a big part where I definitely underestimated that part of the whole experience. Yeah. And I, I was nervous cause I've got all these like raw stories and I start, I've started to bring them a bit more into the professional chat and I was nervous about how you'd respond to it. Not that you're embarrassed by it or worried about it, but just not having, cause I know you haven't heard some of those stories. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also nervous about how it could affect my people, my family, myself. And I think if anything, you and I are trying to get to an even more candid place every time we do one of these sessions, cause it seems to be what people are hungry for just like raw rawness. Yeah. And it's definitely made us better. Like I almost feel you've pushed me to make my comms planning section uh, much more tighter. And I've actually got a better, a, a good version of this um, coming up. You, one of the things you've said is like, you've got to get it down to one framework, one framework. And so for New York, I've got one framework for you, mate. So I'm excited to kind of like Ooh. present that in uh, New York. No, I, pre I appreciate that. And it's difficult, you know, if you think for a living, it's difficult to kind of talk and share your thinking and how you think about things and have people give you ideas back. We know that doing strategy work, frameworks are amazing, but they can be this lost world that a lot of us can fall into sometimes for a long time where we've got a framework upon a framework upon a framework. And I'll tell you one of the, uh, an example of that mirrored, 
corridor. It is the customer journey or experience plan into a communications plan into an idea with a creative brief before it. We're like, whoa, there's so much going on here. Does it have to be that much going on here? But point is to be able to share your toys, work out how to improve in public. It's fun. I like it. It's kind of cool doing this. I haven't done video in a long time. Um, if you enjoy, hey, also, if you enjoy these episodes, please share them with people. Uh, you can email them links. You can send them to the iTunes, sweat, Sweathead on iTunes. Feel free to drop a review and rating. Um, before we jump into today's topic, which I think we know, I think we know what we're going to talk about. There were four live action strategies that we've already done. Uh, the very first one was lamps and you can hear that one live. I don't know if you've got this stuff in front of you right now, Julian. No. Uh, I'll, I'll share my screen if you happen to be watching this on video. This just came and you can hear it live because we had no plans to do it. And then we did it live on Sweathead a few months ago. Uh, we imagined a hypothetical situation where lamps were going extinct and we blamed digital screens. We made it up. And then we thought, well, how could we solve that problem? We didn't get overly specific with an audience, but what we thought is there's an interesting strategy direction, strategy direction, direction in a strategy that talks about how lamps can warm these lives that many of us feel are chilling. So there's a riff on uh, ch chilling and warmth uh, because of screens. So you talk about loneliness and it's all that sort of stuff, right? And then comms plan, were there a couple of things in the comms plan that you'd want to shout out in the lamps direct example? Um, I think if we went down to the idea, so the idea we had was uh, like a concert series, um, a warm concert series. And then I think the job that I did there was like blowing out that idea into a full program so you've got like one idea how do you make it a full program so there was like a this is one of the formats that i really like uh frameworks is like storifying the idea to the like the before during and after and we did that um with like spotify and using spotify to help get the reach behind that beforehand and finding playlists that really made sense for those kind of like warm intimate moments which lamps bring us towards so trying to find the parallel with the music and then going into a concert and then the after was um kind of like sharing that later on in the series mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Someone hissing at you from outside? Yeah, they are. <laughs> do, do, can I just, while you talk through the next one, I'm yeah, going to try to close right. the window. All right. Then we, uh, then we looked at Dos Toros. This is all, I don't think I'm going to edit this. We'll see. Then we did uh, Dos Toros, who's, who's sponsoring, who sponsored the uh, mega classes initially. And we, it was just a, a little strategy about how do, how do you get people to kind of come off their lunchtime habits? Uh, and we thought about an audience in New York, specifically people who'd moved to New York for some kind of adventure and that there is a sort of tension or irony in the fact that they come to New York for adventure, but then they go on automatic to lunch every day and they stop seeking adventure. And so where, we, where that uh, strategy goes really is, where's that slide gone? Uh, that like to show that lunching or taking buying lunch at Dos Torres isn't lunch on automatic. And then uh, Julian's coming back. Mate, I, I just, oh, yeah. it, it classic. Of course, there's going to be like a whippersnipper guy going around when we decide to start recording. Like what else is going to happen? So yeah, um, all windows are shut. So yes. hopefully we're a bit, bit better now. Yeah, yeah. Got to close those windows. So I just explained the Dos Torres example of showing that lunch at lunch or lunching at Dos Torres isn't lunch on automatic. It's a, it's a little brief. There's, there's a bit of a direction there. And then anything you want to call out in the comms plan? Not really. It was just a nice way to show the triggers of the moments that you could do. So if you click on that slide there, we just thought through the con like a bit of a consumer journey of like when will be the moments that we could really um, like get them to be thinking about adventure a little bit more. So that was a nice little tie in of a different way that you can use comms there. Yeah. And if you're listening to this rather than watching it, the day in the life of involves the commute, having coffee, meeting outside, deciding or debating about what lunch to take, even though we're arguing that a lot of that's automatic buying lunch, eating lunch, and then the commute on the way home and just working out where you might want to appear. Uh, then we did 
vegetarian burgers. And we've done this a few times now. We actually did it twice at a really large uh, emotional event in Brazil at Facebook. So we've done a few different strategies for this one. We've just shared the one and it came from the, one of the early uh, mega classes that we did where we were trying to work out how to sell vegetarian burgers to the Midwest where people, and this is without all the stuff's without deep research, but the argument is that a lot of people in the Midwest eat meat. They don't want to eat vegetables. That's a huge generalization. Uh, but the interesting thing I think for the, for a creative brief for trying to solve that problem, and you'd need to define the audience more specifically is this idea that you might eat meat, but your meat eats plants because so many things that people eat, eat, vegetables and grass or whatever, you know, plant-based things. Comms plan, what would you point out there? Um, it was just trying to go after the most, I, I think, iconic meat um, icons of the Midwest and how can we take it, well, the line was like, take it to the meats, which I thought was really nice because you can automatically see like, um, crop circles and then we were talking about like the Iowa State Fair or Route 66 so where are these icons of meat and then kind of coming up in those environments I thought was an interesting way yeah and part of what we discussed when we're doing it live is trying to work out how to get restaurant or owners to order beyond burger and so the three parts to the comms plan are the first one is awareness talking about how meat is midwestern life how your meat eats plants then it's uh, trying to address the barrier that for some restaurant owners, perhaps it seems too complex for their menus or too foreign for their menus. And then the third part could be to overcome the barrier that maybe they don't know if the profit's there or what the profit will be. Mm -hmm. So that's how we broke that one out. And then the last one that we put up, which came from the mega class in Sao Paulo was for Crocs, the shoes where people were like, how do you sell Crocs? And then we decided on a group of people that uh, people having babies for the first time. And there was a beautiful insight that came out of a chat with everybody there, which is before you become a parent, you don't realize how your feet can actually become a second pair of hands. And so wearing Crocs can keep this second pair of hands active and safe and potentially even comfortable. There are many other types of strategy or type, like strategies that uh, you could take like you could use to solve that problem but there was something nice in that one and so the strategy statement that we came up with and this is live and we have not over edited it was to show that crocs are the shoes for parents with full hands mm. C comes plan jc this one was um we're still waiting for like the creative idea to really uh like push this one a little bit further so i think um we were thinking that the whole product is kind of making it like this um, secret thing that's like under the table. It was like, how do we make it the biggest secret um, product for every parent has them, but they don't want to talk about them publicly. So I was kind of trying to think of all those environments where you could kind of start bringing that up as a little bit more of a secret. Um, and so the three barriers we had was like attitude. We had to like reclaim cool, like what was cool to this like young parent and then when they were researching um and this was to the bigger baby journey of what they needed we were thinking like we have to show why feet mattered and then uh retail was really making sense in shops so we thought there was a really nice thing here of people actually gifting it to new parents so did you have it in like um, gift guides or like baby bags because a lot of hospitals give you a baby bag to take home um, or in other environments where people are like starting to buy all those products. So Ikea kind of came up. So there was just some interesting starting thoughts there around what, what could be the creative idea. The other thing is I really like to hold these back till we see the creative idea so I can work out which can slot in. If you go too early with this, um, you kind of lose a lot of the ideas because you're not kind of pushing them into the creative lane or the creative idea. Yeah. So comms planning is part of part of comms planning is about trying to encourage an idea to appear in the world that connects to the idea based on a similar theme and that makes the communication more effective 
not just more efficient. So people who do comms planning often have to have debates about what's efficient versus what's effective. Part of what we thought about for the Crocs thing is how do we get Crocs to become part of the nesting phase? So a lot of people, I don't know what the stats are. I, I had kids and I used to read baby books uh, and went through this as well. It's sort of six months in, all of a sudden you're like cleaning all day. And you're like, what just happened? Now I'm in Ikea all day. What's going on? That's my weekend. But there can be this nesting phase where people examine what's in their their homes and they pay much more attention to what they bring into their homes as well. Not everybody, but a lot like the ingredient ingredients suddenly become more important. And so what you see listed there on, on slide 10, if you go to the deck uh, and you can find all these things in uh, our email lists and on sweathead, et cetera, it's usually bitly bit B I T dot L Y forward slash live strategy uh, burger or live strategy crocs. So bit.ly forward slash live strategy crocs for this one, not burger. Uh, and you can see some of the media that we listed that that people would use during that nesting phase. All right. So today we put up a request on Twitter and Facebook. Big shout outs to everybody who suggested a brand to play with. <laughs> There's a lot of chat about really controversial stuff. And I'm like, I just think to do any of that justice in a, like in any sort of justice, we would need some kind of research and a little bit more time. So for example, Brexit in the UK came up a few times. WeWork came up quite a few times. Um, Thomas Cook, I didn't even know about this until now. And I guess it just happened. Thomas Cook declared, is a, uh, de declared bankruptcy today and about 600,000 travelers are stranded. That one is a little, I, you know, I think we'd need to be a bit careful with that one. We'd need some information. And then we've got Gillette, Subway, Boeing, Uber, Victoria's Secret, Swatch. Watches have come up a couple of times now. I guess that's because I don't know if everybody's working on it and they just want us to help them or if it's just because watches aren't as important as they used to be, often because of phones. Also, time's not real. Uh, Cognac, the Catholic Church. Yeah, thanks for that one. Uh, Banks, GoPro. So there were some of the, the, the suggestions there. Uh, we think we know what we're going to go through. There were... It's funny because someone suggested the USA as well. And I have to say, there's, I've been sitting on this idea for a while. And it's after I read a book called American Nation, which I've talked about before by Colin Woodard. Uh, but look, when politics get controversial in America and you live here and then you travel, everyone around the world wants to tell you about the politicians in America. Do you get that, Julian? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's really interesting. The, the idea that America is not just one country, it's almost, it's, it's, you know, it's a, it's a federation of countries. And to some degree you could take that further and there could be a strategy or an idea that talks about how America is more than a country because it's kind of got everything here, good and bad, amazing, not amazing. But I do like that thought of America as more than a country. Bjorn Borg, they're selling underwear. And from what was explained, in, uh, in the Sweathead Facebook group by Jonas Wallen. Bjorn Borg apparently is an underwear that parents buy for kids and then teenagers stop buying it because it's the pants or the underpants that they grew up in. That's an interesting challenge. You hear that every now and then. Like Levi's had a problem in the 90s where I think younger people stopped wearing it because the parents were wearing it. Uh, I think there's an interesting direction in there just talking about... Uh, as naughty as you want to be somehow talking about naughtiness, but not in a way that's like really obvious and like an old person trying to talk about the naughtiness of teenagers, but to separate the naughtiness of, of teenagers from the being told off for being naughty when they're toddlers, you could probably have some fun with that. Uh, and then someone also asked, uh, Brian Kelly asked about a strategy for the DMV, which is where people go to jail. They go to prison. Have you been to the DMV? No, mate, that, isn't that the, like, to get your driver's license? That's totally. It. It's exactly that. But it can be a harrowing experience, almost as harrowing, or probably less harrowing than yeah. the, T the TSA in the US. I like that. Uh, DMV is interesting. Uh, the brief that Brian was suggesting is, how could you convince parents to want to spend time in the DMV? And my head immediately was like, I don't think you could do that unless you talk about the DMV being the place you need to escape to when the rest of your life is just hectic. Like it's a slightly less hectic 
place that you can escape to to get some stuff done. I don't know. It's definitely not a sanctuary. I think there's, but couldn't it be a sanctuary? Like, I think there's like a flip there that you can do. I, I forget. I think it was even one of our live action strategies that someone was talking about um, being on a bus and it's the time they feel most calm because mm-hmm. they know they've just got five hours. Out, this was long haul buses mm-hmm. where they're just sitting there and they've got nothing else to do. And they're, it's kind of like airplanes too. Yeah. People love that time. I, I feel that on airplanes. Right. And so for those who don't know, the DMV is the department of motor vehicles. Yeah. You could, you, there's probably some funny, I don't know if it has to be funny, but a funny way to talk about sanctuary for parents going to the DMV. It's just, it can be quite chaotic. I mean, maybe it's different around the country as well. Have you been to one in LA? No, I need, uh, to, I need to do it. Um, but it, it's the same amount of waiting time, but it's also a chance. Isn't it also a chance to like connect with your kids, but obviously in a really bad environment. Oh, well, that's, also... that's if you're taking, are you saying that if you're taking your kids to get a driver's license? Yes. Ah, I, th- I actually have a feeling that maybe the brief was about that. The imagined brief. Or it could have been the a brief about people who just happen to have children. It could be young children. Maybe, maybe they're wearing Crocs. You know, how, yeah. do you, how do you get new parents who've just born Croc, who've just bought a pair of Crocs to go to the DMV? I Why don't, don't we know. do this? I like it. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. we, we were going to do standing desks. Yeah. But let's do this. Okay. So, the brand is the DMV. Now I'm yep. gonna I'm gonna type this, and for those of you who like to do to work in public, I used to do, and Julian's done a lot of like writing on walls and on big butcher's paper and you know massive post-it notes. And I the last time I did this at an event was actually in in India, and I just felt I had my back to the audience the whole time, and I was trying to catch words, and I'm writing and scribbling, and then you're turning the pages. So now what we do is we just open up a, a document in Google Docs and we just type, and hopefully people get to see this stuff happening and and hopefully it's useful we never say that this stuff's good this is first thoughts and we would spend days or at least hours trying to get somewhere better but uh yeah so don't don't judge us just enjoy us so we're going to do dmv yeah okay what do we have a business issue and an audience Uh, yeah it's time isn't it like time like that's the big the business issues people are putting it off so because it takes so much time. I literally, this is me too. I'm like in LA, I'm not getting my license because I know it takes a lot of time and it just seems like, I, like I've got so many better things to do with my life. Talk to me a bit about that because this, the past month I've been getting assertive emails from my lovely New York library. New York libraries are amazing, by the way, please spend time with them if you live here, but my card's about to run out. And so they're sending me emails to go renew it. And I have a feeling that's because they get measured on renewals and on total memberships. Right. Does, but I don't think that would be the case with the DMV. Like I don't think the DMV has to have a certain number. I'd be surprised if they had to have a certain number of licensed registrations what what's an issue like why would they care whether you register or not because, like because they make money that way they make money okay because i think they make money on the registration like and the less registered cars the less money they're going to be making and i guess that helps i i'm guessing it's a government organization so then it goes to everything else but maybe also they don't want people driving illegally because it's dangerous it's a safety issue Okay. That's not a. That's like a bigger issue on top of it. But okay. So the so the business issue, if we just couch that more in terms of money, is that they're we're imagining this by the way. We have no. Yeah. It's probably not true. Uh, that they're not making their money's down. The revenue's down because revenue's down. people are putting it out. But yeah, people are putting it off. I'm typing and talking, by the way. I don't know if you've done that recently, but uh, for those of you who are listening, so the words will come out unusually and that happens whether I'm typing or not, but it will come out doubly unusually. So revenue is down because people don't have time to, we're doing licenses to register licenses. Yep. So the driving, it's also a safety issue. Okay audience um so it could be 
is that we'd have to narrow in on a specific audience within the driving population, I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, I would guess it's people who like are really busy in life. And yeah. if I'm trying to like narrow in on what it is, so yeah. it's people who've, who've just taken on more responsibility. So new parents makes example or a new job or moving to a new city. New pa- so people with a lot of new responsibility. Yeah. New parents, new job, new city. Okay. I think we could play with that, you know, and you could tighten that. You could go more broad. Let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now we're going to talk about problem. There's a little framework that we're going to play with and it's problem insight, edge or advantage, and then strategy. Then we, we might get to a campaign idea and then build out a very simple comms plan. That's the aim. We're doing this in a very direct way because there are obviously a lot of tools and frameworks and techniques that you can use to talk about the problem behind the problem. What we're trying to do, if you've not heard this before, is get beyond briefs that talk about increasing awareness, relevance, salience, consideration, intent, usage, advocacy, and conversion, things like that. Uh, you will find that many briefs do seem like copy and paste of the briefs that came before. What we're trying to do is articulate the human problem behind the business problem an obstacle or a barrier in people's minds that we will try to solve at least through communication, if not through service and product. We're going to assume this is kind of advertising based now. So we have the brand is the DMV, the department of motor vehicles. The business issue is revenue is down. Oh, we made this up. Revenue is down because people are struggling to find time to register licenses. The audience is people with a lot of new responsibility or new responsibilities, new parents, new job, new city, we could probably connect that somehow to a media buying audience, but at least we have a sense of mindset within a sentence. Okay. Problem behind the problem. Why don't we think these people with new responsibility are taking the time to register or renew licenses? They've heard the horror stories of friends who've had to go through this experience and that scares them. So they've heard the horror story. And so again, if you're listening to this, what I'm going to do, I play the piano in this little duet. I can imagine us doing this at 70 and 80 years old in Nashville. Uh, I'm going to re- re uh, Hey, (laughs) it's like those dueling the dueling pianos in Las Vegas and various parts of the U S I'm, what I'm going to do is we're going to go back and forth and I'm going to write down, we'll go for, we'll go for about seven problem statements. Okay. So, They've heard the horror stories of friends dealing with the DMV. Mm-hmm. Now, why I like that as, as uh, a starting point is the word horror story. You don't usually associate horror story with DMV, although some of you might, but there's, there's an idea waiting for us to pounce and play with it. Okay. Why else? Uh, just trying to book the appointment. Um, they give you dates that are so far off in advance that it's like useless. Or the other option is you line up on the day and you've got to wait for eight hours. So it's like, I guess they're two different problems, but one, actually, no, it's the same problem, just different things. You can't actually visualize the time that you'll be able to do this. One is like, you don't know how long you're going to be waiting. And the second is it's a mystery in the future. Like with it, like when you're talking about a more than a month out, you do not even know what you're going to be doing on that day. So it's really hard to book an appointment. Okay. I'll, hang on. I want to get that language again. So I wrote, you can't see the time you'll need to wait. You can't visu- visualize is a bit big. You can't visualize the time you'll need to wait. You talked about, you used the word mystery. What was that phrase or sentence again? Um, it, I was just saying like, it's a mystery when you'll actually, your appointment will turn up. Like when you'll actually be able to see someone. And this is true or we were just kind of, no, 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 no. That's just true. what you've heard. Okay. Yeah. Let's keep those two things because I know we've got the topic of time. Let's keep these things separate. So it's a mystery when you'll be able to see someone. And that's mm. if, if you turn up on the day, you're supposed to book in advance, aren't you? You can book in advance or you can turn up on the day. This is okay. what I've been told too. Okay. I'm literally this consumer because I'm like going off half truth. You're using all these horror stories to justify not even looking into it, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Okay. But I'm uh, like excited because I'm going to have to do this soon and then I'll just have reframed it in my head. So that's why we're doing it, mate. Totally. Totally. Okay. So it's a mystery when you'll be able to see someone. The dates are so far ahead. It's hard to wrap your ha- head around. 
it or when what else um it's just known as like the most inefficient place around it's just like the worst of government bureaucracy typified okay it's known as the most inefficient place around the worst of government bureaucracy why else it's like a very depressing environment Mm -hmm. It's like they've, uh, this is my head too. They've just like skimped on money on everything, uncomfortable chairs, waiting in the, like your number's not up for like a hundred, you know, people. It's just like, get me out of this jail, this hell hole. Again, that's kind of the horror stories that I've heard. Okay. So we don't know if this is true or not. And we're being dramatic because uh, this is a performance. So we've been, we've been dramatic just to try to find the energy and all these things. So even if we were making this stuff up, we would want to check whether it's real or not. But still, you can allow the drama to percolate in what you're talking about. Because otherwise you're starting this like flat place of like obvious stuff. Uh, I, there's one thing that I think a little bit about. I feel like in some, some countries are quite obedient. I felt I was very obedient in Australia you know, we love a line or a queue and we hate it when people cut in. In some countries, those things don't matter as much. I feel that especially in New York and probably in LA, it seems like everyone's trying to get away with stuff. Not everyone, mm. but a lot of people are just trying to get away with stuff. People are less obedient. And so I feel a little bit less pressure to do certain things as well. Do you, do you relate to that one at all? Yeah. This is, I also, mean, you're, you're the also, audience here. Also, <laughs> also there's like a lot, um, I feel like the bigger place you get, the responsibility kind of decreases. Um, it's, it's the, I forget what the effect is. Um, is it Kitty Genovese's effect? Uh, where like, because a rape, someone was screaming rape and it was in an apartment building with like hundreds of people. So no one called because everyone expected someone else to. But I think it's a bit of a flip of that of like, you don't know anyone, you, resp you know, you're not responsible to anyone. And DMV just gets all these people you don't know. So you kind of act out a little bit more because you're like, none of this is ever going to follow me. Yeah, there's a part of what you're talking I don't know what the name of what you described is, but it sounds adjacent to the bystander strategy, which is probably yes. not that around. Not like, bystander is not the right word for what we're talking about, but I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. that it's also big, the DMV and registrate like licenses, et cetera. It's also big and anonymous. You don't feel accountable slash responsible yep okay so it's, that's that's uh, seven do you want to try one more i can hear one more coming no no i was just checking if kitty genovese was the right person it is okay so, how do you spell that uh k-i-t-t-y g-e-n-o-v-e-s-e -E -E. okay so we've listed seven problems we have. They've heard the horror stories of friends dealing with the DMV before. It's a mystery when you'll be able to see someone. Mm -hmm. If you turn up on that day, assuming you can. The dates are so far ahead, it's hard to wrap your head around it. It's known as the most inefficient place around, the worst of government bureaucracy. It's a depressing environment. Everything is skimped on. Uncomfy chairs. It's a bit of a hell hell. Mm -hmm hell hole other people get away with what they can they're less obedient they don't renew their licenses there's plenty of people in the u.s driving without legit licenses uh, it's also big and anonymous as in i don't know roads cars the dmv you don't feel accountable or responsible mm. okay so that language is plain english we could improve it but we are indicting and condemning in a sense the situation that we see but that is not negative we're not being negative. We're just trying to point out facts in a dramatic way because we want our strategy to solve the thing that seems negative and, and to solve it with the opposite energy. So where this might seem a bit too negative, we want the strategy to be like, you know, I don't know, catapult that problem out of here. Does that make sense? Uh, is there, how would you articulate the main thing that we want to solve based on those seven problem statements? Uh, I would have said the first one about like the, the horror stories kind of like coming out to me or the time, like horror story 
encapsulates time. So I don't know if that's too broad, like too high up. This is what I'm always dealing with at the moment is like, you know, what this bad um, business speak, what altitude is your idea? Like, totally. cause like, are you trying to take on horror stories, which can encapsulate more than time, you know, or do you try to come down a little bit closer and just say time? Um, I don't know. What, what's your opinion there? Well, first opinion is that you're always trying to calibrate and you do that through writing. Uh, the the thing is, I, I think you're looking for mechanics, you know, and reactions. Have I heard this before? Does it turn me on? Am I excited about this? Are these statements ideas? So I think of, of a problem statement as an idea. It brings together things that don't usually belong together. Uh, and then the altitude thing, the problem with strategy work, and we always talk about this, all, a lot of us talk about this, is when it starts to get lofty and fluffy advertising, semiotics, blah, blah language, like, uh, like you know, my, the word empowerment. It's just an important idea, struggle with the word, you know, so you could say that DM, the problem is that DMV doesn't empower potential registrants. And I'm like, I don't know, what does that mean? So I like horror story and mystery. I was wondering whether we could combine them through. Mate, this is, is this our Halloween edition horror story? <laughs> <laughs> it could, well, it could be, it could be. Yeah. Hey, maybe that's, that's also a moment. Maybe people do this on Halloween is when they go dressed up in their costumes. Okay. Hold that thought. Hold that thought because that's getting to like an idea or a tactic off a potential strategy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So how do we solve the problem? So um, look, let's, maybe we do start the problem as being horror. The DMV going to the DMV I think implicit in that is this people fear that going to the DMV will make them an actor in their own horror story. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's a little, mm, <laughs> whatever that sound means, but let's play with that. Okay. Uh, now we want the insights to open up the problem, which means it's probably going to repeat a theme in the problem. The theme that we're currently playing with is the word or the phrase going to the DMV might make them an actor in their own horror story. Mm. So now we want people to see the, the idea of a horror story different. So when, and you hint, you've already hinted at this. I know where we're going. When is a horror story good? Well, it's always better after the fact. So the best stories that you always have always come from horror stories, like horror moments. Um, so like the worst, so my worst backpacking experience is also my funniest story. Like I was on this bus, uh, tangent, yeah. small tangent, take I was on it, this take bus, it. just started backpacking for the first time, 22 years old, um, got to Guatemala and was speaking Spanish, hadn't spoken Spanish to anyone on a bus. There's this old guy who I was sitting on a bus with and I was in this conversation. I was so, I was like, yes, I'm finally like in there. Halfway through the conversation, well, not half, it was the end of the conversation after this, he taps me on the shoulder, gives me a little bit of a wink and then um, pulls down his pants. We're on a public bus and starts to wee on the bus. And I just arrived there. So I was thinking maybe this is what everyone does on like the public buses. There, I didn't know. I don't know. Okay. And then as soon as that happens, we just start to go up this hill and me and my mate's backpack are at the ba- bottom, the back of the bus, and it just all goes down onto our backpacks. And I was just like, oh, my God, this is the worst day ever. They end up kicking the guy off the bus because obviously that's not normal behaviour. But the cheeky wink and that at me, I was just like, oh, my God. But horror story at the time, amazing story afterwards. Okay. So what? Uh, also maybe you've got a new anecdote for yeah. a comms framework involving <laughs> something to do with a trickle down effect. I don't know. That's not, that's not a thing. It's not a thing. Uh, and also if that's your only horror story from travel, you're doing well. What, no. So what, what is it about the horror story that makes that good that you can laugh about it after the fact, for example? Yeah. Yeah. Like it gives you a story for later on, like, and maybe that's why everyone loves the, look, they hate the DMV, but everyone walks away with the story. Because the other thing is, the other thing I've always heard is like, there's crazy people at the DMV. Like you meet people from all walks of life and people you wouldn't expect to. So like you're destined to walk away with a good story. Okay. So look, uh, look, this is not some mind shattering 
insight, but well, let's say that the insight is something to do with horror stories are always better later when you can laugh at them. Okay. It's convenient. It fits where we're going. I'm okay with it. Would you change that at all? My only problem is, is that it's like, I don't know if the DMV would acknowledge that they've got a problem like in their comms. Oh, totally. Uh, so that's a separate topic, but here's the thing. Cause this, that kind of comment will come up every now and then when I'm, especially cause I like to talk about problems, mm. um, which is not to say that you do or don't, but I really do is that someone might say, oh, we can't talk about that or that, you know, we can't admit that. And it's like, well, don't let that thought prevent us from doing the thinking because we're using the idea of a problem as a, and an obstacle as a critical thinking tool. Don't, don't mm. take that critical thinking tool away from us. We mm. late, later, we decide what we admit and acknowledge and talk about in, in public. And some cultures like the Aussies, we are very comfortable with self-deprecation. And so in the US, for example, well, actually, if, let me talk about self-deprecation quickly. If you self-deprecate, which is to say, oh, I'm not very good at this. If someone thinks that you're lower in status than them, they might agree with you. However, if you're higher in status to someone and that's someone else, someone's perception, I'm not saying that these are objective things, but if you're higher in status and you self-deprecate, oh, I'm not very good at this, then people might find that charming. So self-deprecation is a little bit of a, a, an interesting thing to play with. Um, so inside itself, horror stories are always better later when you can laugh at them. Is it about laughing? Because you, I like that thought of like everyone walks away with a story. Yeah, well, it's also like there's something about like the horror at the moment then gives you a story for late, later. Like it's not a horror story until it's not a story till after the fact. I, I don't know how you get that. Man. Okay. So it's, it, so it's, it could be, it might be, and this is, this is, uh, this is a little fluffy, but give us, we're doing this live. It might be horrible in the moment, but it's not a horror story until you, can tell it later oh, yeah, yeah. is that english mm. the idea is like it might it might feel horrible in the moment but you can turn that feeling into a story later it might feel horrible in the moment but you can turn yeah. that feeling into a story later i'm okay with that for now because I, I know where we're gonna go i have a feeling are you cool with that yep it might feel okay Hopefully this makes sense if you're listening to it and not just watching it. So we've got a problem. People fear that going to the DMV will make them an actor in their own horror story. Insight. It might feel horrible in the moment, but you can turn that feeling into a horror story later. But's a good go-to technique for writing an insight. I did like that phrase that everyone walks away or drives away. Like that's too, a bit too punny. Right. It's so easy. I know it's so easy to jump. It's like with food and the word taste or like. Mm, what, you, really... So you don't like putting that in there? Uh, I would lean away. I'm okay with it. I would lean away from it because if you've ever worked on an auto brand, so many auto brand strategies or campaign strategies are driving something. Okay. Uh, and it's okay. It's okay. It's just, can we not do it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. So, you could, we could just jump into the strategy to show that everyone walks away with a story. Okay. Go, go. Let's do that. So I'm going to take out the edge or advantage and I'm going to write a long strategy statement, which is show that everyone walks away with a story. Now, if you wanted to turn that into a single minded proposition, which is a pretty traditional box on a brief, it could be come to the DMV, leave with a story, something like that. And so a single minor proposition is just a slightly cuter way of saying a strategy statement. I like a strategy statement structured like this show that everyone walks away from the DMV with a story because it's not trying to be a hashtag, a campaign idea, um, a slogan tagline, etc. right? It's just like a clean sentence where it has an, and it does have an idea because it's the DMV and walking away with a story. Um, I'm thinking Mark, uh, we now just thinking back to the target, um, which was like busy. The, and one of the other things I'd like to get your perspective on this, cause this is what I do. I always like write them out and then tweak it all together. Like mm. keep removing because yes. we said busy, like up the front, these people are really busy. And mm. one of the things is, is that you can do a lot of busy work, but not actually have anything good to show for it. Mm -hmm. Where, like, you know, like the shot, you know, the trip to Ikea or doing all this other paperwork, you're not going to get a story out of that. 
you're going to get a story out of this. Like, you, you know, there's busy work and then there's remarkable or remarkable work. And I wonder if we weave that in a little bit or tighten the screws on it. Yeah. Um, Give it uh, so sometimes at this point, cause I've been typing my brain's like, where do I go? Where do I go? So if you can summarize it quickly, cause I like where, where you're going there. Um, yeah. Like it's like busy doesn't make stories. Remarkable. Okay. Like okay. The horror. Yeah. Something about like, busy work doesn't make stories like you it's almost like your life's got a little sorry your life's got a little boring um because you've just been doing so much admin work where it's time to treat yourself to a horror story (laughs) okay busy so i'm not sure where this goes just now it could be the insight busy work doesn't make stories and that's it's general uh I'm also okay with it. Could It might feel horrible in the moment, but you can turn that feeling into a story later. And then we had, you can do a lot of busy work, but not have a lot to show from it. You won't get a story out of it. Because um, I don't know if it's like, ha- the, the worry I had before, um, Mark, was like, I don't know if it speaks to the target so much if we've got um, the original, which was, it might feel horrible in the moment, but you can turn the feeling into a horror story later. It's like, if you're so busy, you're like, I don't even have time for a story. You know, like I don't have time for stories. I've got to just get all my shit done. And it's almost like a bit of a, you know, that almost appeals to the author or someone like, Oh, I, I'm just a bit creatively dry. Let me go to the DMV and get a funny story. Like that's not our audience. Our audience is more like, I'm so fucking busy. Like, okay. So what am I, what am I changing here? The problem? Because this, oh, I think it's, I think it's the, um, I think it, it's insight. Okay, so people are too busy. Okay, you got some words for me. People are too busy f- for busy work, but not too busy for stories. Mm. No, it's like. Like the admin work, the administrative work makes you a boring person or something like, I wish there was a name for all this other work that's like inconsequential, but it's like just busy. Like, mm, okay. No. Nope. So what, cause what you could do. So first of all, like these briefs are scaffolding and you might need to tweak a word at the bottom, jump back up to the top, come back into the middle and change the word. And so what you're hearing is we're trying to work out how to honor, pay homage to the word busy here because that's really where we did start off. However, that could also be a second strategy direction or second page that we build out, JC. Mm. Uh, And I'm nervous that in the time that we've got that we're going to make it more difficult for ourselves because okay. because i think you're right to go back to the word busy and just riff on that uh however i think we can also get somewhere interesting on the horror stories especially mm-hmm. if it's like if we were to get even more focused and talk about like la well the other thing is is like if you're starting up life or something like or like i feel like a lot of these new maybe in new jobs and stuff new job or new life or new work. Like if you move to a new city, you kind of want the horror story. So you've got something to chat to people about and Mm. relate to them about. So you Mm. actually do want this horror story. I just think we need to show people that like horror stories are the best ways to connect with people. Yeah. It reminds me of, there was a, I think a Ted talk. I've forgotten the name of the lady who presented it and she talked about how to look at art. And I know you're into art and art philosophy and art history. And she talked about, uh, this is probably super famous and I'm embarrassed that I've forgotten the lady's name, uh, how she would go to a gallery, look at paintings and just imagine the story, like what's happening. And she would just tell herself a story. It's a bit like that for this DMV example that you could go there and just be stressed out by how busy it is, or you could treat it like a, you know, like, <laughs> like a art, free horror show. A free ho- there you go. Yeah. Uh, and we don't mean that in a way that's judging any human beings, by the way. So, I, I just like want to efficiencies of it. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I think this is holding. So we're going to park the idea of busy just for now. Yeah. Okay. Because in some respects, arguing that you can go to the DMV for a free horror show, maybe that does argue against, oh, I'm too busy to do this. You're like, no, no, you're going to, it's like a free horror show. It's entertainment. That could be an argument. It's a less direct argument than trying to reframe the idea of busy or what people say they're busy about. So, I like that. It's like actually entertainment, not like this is going to be entertaining because that's, that's a good thing. It's like, Oh my God, I'm so, I'm so busy. I can't do anything. It's like, well, here you get a bit of entertainment while you go do this activity where you're not going to get that with any of these other things. Yeah. I think that's what we're saying. And I don't know what the words are as I'm typing, but I, I, I like where we're going. I don't know what the campaign idea is. is. Let's just, should we just call it horror show just to make it make sure yeah. there's an ob- obvious connection. I don't know if you'd call it DMV horror show. Uh, okay now let's get to a comms plan this is hanging together enough and you know what sometimes that's okay Uh, i would have liked to flip it to at least be a little bit more realistic to what the actual dmv could say because i don't they're never going to say that there are oh hang on no we don't do realism yet because uh, no honestly i wouldn't even i wouldn't stop myself at this point no i wouldn't stop myself like i would uh and if we were working together, I would be like, let's come up with another five. I use numbers. I'll be three, five, seven, ten. Yeah. Let's just come up with another five, another three at least, and then work out which ones seem realistic and or how do you make them more realistic, but also how do you make them even crazier? So I don't I wouldn't be asking the kind of questions that like the vetting questions just yet, if that's okay. Okay. I just want to get it down because it gives me something to beat and compare to. And okay. if, I'm, if I'm like, you know what, this didn't even talk about busy and we have to talk about busy. Then I'm like, okay, that's fine. It was just first thoughts, stream of consciousness. Uh, so as far as communications plan. Yep. Okay. So there's a couple of thoughts I've got. Um, there's okay. There's the original thing you could do, which is off like a consumer journey. Um, which is like, okay, let's take one of those things, like moving to a new city. And then you'd look at like the consumer journey there. And like, when are they meant to like, think about like buying the, like getting a new driver's license. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's actually, you know, you could get really tight in there because they could say, we lose all this money because people move to these new States, but they never get a new driver's license and all their money goes back to like, if you move to LA and you're still on a New York driver's license, the local LA, uh, California doesn't make any money. Mm-hmm. So it is, it probably is a specific problem. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you could do one that would be um, like, I would almost look at their thing um, of like new, moving to a new city. What are like the key steps there and moments where they do other activities um, and you could almost like draw out that consumer journey of okay. like, what are the steps there? Yeah, the yeah. other way that you could do it is, um, like looking at the journey specifically for, um, the actual DMV. So you go like the awareness of, Hey, I need to get a new driver's license to consideration of like a oh, booking mm. appointment to actually mm. being there. That would be the other way that you would do a comms task for this. Then um, the two of those. So we choose one of those um, comms frameworks. Which one do you want to do? I, I think if we stay general, it's going to be easier. When we talk about moving to a new city, what's lovely about that is you can get numbers on on that there are probably public numbers on the number of people mm. moving to and leaving cities and then the numbers of people who aren't registering i just feel that for this exercise if we can take it uh, a bit broad like for example like the comms idea could be to this is obvious right and it's been done before in tons of different categories from travel through to probably perfume and aftershave but you could act like a, a netflix launch of a horror series mm. uh you know okay to me, it's that show, it's almost like Sleep No More a little bit more yeah. too. Or yeah. like the Universal Studios has um, horror, and, horror and Disneyland do this too, the horror weeks mm-hmm. um, where, you know, people dress up. So that could be another way. Exactly. Um, I'm just thinking, sorry, what I'm trying to do right now is work out what are the key tasks. Yep. 
on let's the do, three. Should we do the three, three, do you want to start with three barriers or three, I know yeah. they're kind of connected, right? So what would, in a general sense, what are the three barriers that we need to solve? Um, so I think it's about getting people to, um, uh, it's, there's a couple reevaluate, like see that it's not a dull experience, but it's a, like the horror show. So like reframe the perception. Then the second one would be like, get them to book, like make it easy to book and then getting them to turn up on the day and, and having a horror experience, like amplifying that horror experience. Okay. So, so barrier one, people don't think they have time or want the pain. Barrier two, they don't, this is pretty straightforward. They don't book and barrier three. If they book, they might not turn up or they might delay. If they book, yeah. they might not turn up. Okay. And then what if we, so think, rearticulate the tasks for me. I know you kind of touched on it there and then maybe one or two channels just to give an example for each of those three yep. parts of the comms plan. Okay. So they've heard um, people don't think they want the pain. I think that's perfect. Like where actually what we need to reframe it is no, you walk away with the free story, like the horror story. Um, then the second one of, they don't book what I'd want there is a little bit more of like, what is the actual, why don't they book? Like you need to get to that next level tension. Um, and so maybe it's like, it's just such a complicated process and maybe that's the start of the horror story, you know, like instead of seeing it as, uh, like a long experience, it's like, no, that's part of the mm -hmm. welcome to the story. And then, the final one is the barriers, right? Um, it's just like, let's add to the horror. Like, let's add to the story or let's add to the horror. Okay. I'm typing let's as, just in case you're listening, I'm typing as this goes. So we've got barrier one. People don't think they want the pain. Task, show them it's not pain. It's a free story. Barrier mm -hmm. two, they don't book. It's just too complex. Some of the systems are really old and it's kind of weird as well. Uh, task, show them that the difficulties are part of the story. Mm. And barrier three, if they book, they might not turn up. They might delay. They might change the time. They might just fall through. Task, show them the story won't happen without them. It's like your story is waiting for you kind of thing. Your DMV yeah. story is waiting for you. Your story is waiting. Okay. I don't know if this has been done before. I'm sure something similar to it's been done. Uh, but it'd be interesting for the DMV to do it. I don't know if they would do it in the States, but they'd probably do it in somewhere like New Zealand or Sweden or Holland or I don't know. Just the, yeah. Okay. A couple of channels for barrier one. People don't think they want the pain task. Show them it's not pain. It's a free story. Uh, this is when I'm going around like Halloween. I'm like, okay. All right. Where are places like I'd be like, where are moments where they totally understand that they want the pain? Mm -hmm. Like that's part of the game, you know, pain equals gain. Mm -hmm. So you'd be looking for environments where that really happens a lot. So um, Halloween festivals, yeah. yeah. And then the, the other ones would be like, I would be going into environments either where they, they understand that or the, the places where they're like, the activities they're doing are really dull and boring and have no payoff. Mm -hmm. So you'd be going in against what are the other busy activities that are just like no value. Ikea, you know, renting, you know, what else are you doing when you move to a new city? Uh, rents, um, trying to see other houses um, around LA, like trying to fill out all those rental forms, like showing how dull they are and then showing them the excitement of the horror of the DMV. It's okay. kind of cool. So we've got Halloween festivals, online horror movies slash video streaming, and then dull, yeah. exper dull experiences. So researching so, out houses, furniture, banking. Yeah, so I think you want to just break them up and say, yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, the horror ones where you're showing that that's true, that they understand pain equals gain. And then the second one is like where their life's turned completely boring and they've got no entertainment. They're not getting the entertainment value. And you give either of those to a creative team and they might 
or wherever the creative idea comes. Like if they're leaning into the horror, then you do the first one. If they're like leaning into the other dull experiences. Yeah. That way. Um, They don't book. It's just too complex. Um, I think we'd be doing things here on the actual site. So how can we actually make the site experience feel like more in it um, of the start of it? We'd be looking at activities they do just before that. You might also be having like videos of the tutorial videos of like people learning, you know, they're on YouTube of like learning to drive and stuff. Um, any environments where they're like, what's the last click before they do this? And then, um, yeah, the activities online where they're doing those other things that are boring. So like, as, as we were saying before, researching for houses, is this like where we do mm-hmm. like Zillow or how, do, how can we tell they've been on that site for like an hour and they need something else? Um, okay. So it's a repetition of where horror is and or where dull experiences are. Yep. But, but then you've got slightly different channels. Yes. And you're a bit more into the online experience where we're like one click away from them doing this activity okay. um, would be the way you start positioning that. Okay. Barrier three. So this is just understanding the actual DMV experience and um, making sure that there's memorable moments there um, for the people who go. Um, And I guess this kind of loops back into a little bit of like the advocacy or increasing those kind of like horror stories. Um, So it'd be at the DMV as you get there, like the signage on the way there, the out of home just before it, the DMV, um, like the driving tutorial drivers. Is there some program that you can do with them? Um, Yeah, there's a few environments there. Okay. All right. Okay. I think there's enough here, but like I said before, we'd, we'd go again and again and again, wouldn't we? Yeah. Yeah, we would. So to recap, in case your brains weren't following the whole thing, the brand was the department of motor vehicles, the DMV in the USA business issue. We made it up. Revenue was down because people like Julian don't have time to register licenses. The audience people like Julian, with a lot of new responsibility, new job, new city, new parents, new something, new, 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 new. And then we listed a whole bunch of problems and we articulated the problem that we want to solve with this one direction out of many that, that these people fear that going to the DMV will make them an actor in their own horror story. Insight, it's a little one. It might feel horrible in the moment, but you can turn that feeling into a story later or into a horror story later. We jumped over the edge or advantage, which is a way to summarize what makes the brand or product, in this case, the DMV, unique and motivating, unique and motivating in people's minds. We jumped over that and we got to a strategy, which is to say that uh, everyone walks away from the DMV with a story. Campaign idea, we sort of jumped over. I think there could be something in putting it off or put it off, you know, turning the idea of putting it off into a bigger horror show than actually dealing with it. And then we have the comms plan. Anything you want to call out about the comms plan, Julian? No, I was just trying to write, I was seeing if all those pieces of information, whether you could write a um, get to buy from it. Mm, Yes. Do you want me to to tell you what I've got? Totally. I I need your, can you bring up the strategy line there Mm -hmm. as well? Okay. So it's get busy people who fear going to the DMV. It's like a waste of time to register their license by showing them that everyone walks away from the DMV with a story or something yeah. like that. Yeah, that works. Yeah. That works. Um, so it's just taking all the components, like we've just got all those components. We're just configuring them to get to you to a get to who buy. Give it to me. Give yeah. me, give me a get to buy again. Get busy people who fear going to the DMV Mm -hmm. for the horror stories to register their license Mm -hmm. by showing them 
um, that everyone walks away with a story or that it was some other, it was our line was better there. And it's, and now I just say get people who are new to the city, I'd say. Yeah. Okay. Which would be. We fear going to the, because of the horror stories. So get busy people who fear going to the DMV because of the horror stories to register their license by showing them that everyone walks away with a story. I get that. That makes sense. I think yeah. like, any, like anything, cause I notice, you know, I know you're really into the get to buy. I think with all strategy and idea type frameworks, they're all useful, whatever gets you there. The thing is, if you just fill it up with blah, 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 yeah. Yeah. and you don't understand what the lateral thought is and what an insight is. And then it's just, it's just more gobbledygook, but the get to buy, I think can work. Mm. Totally. I agree. I've seen it used horribly too. It's just like when it's used right, the insights hidden also with the, um, get to buy. And also the other one is, um, people, I call it the get to buy, but it's get who to buy. And the mm -hmm. who is like the consumer mindset that you're trying to overcome or the problem you're overcoming. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's another, yeah. You can also add the word unlike, onto the end of this. So it could be by showing them that everyone walks away with a story, unlike, uh, I don't know what we're comparing this to as far as competitors. Maybe the competition is what we were saying. It's just uh, dull, dull stuff in your life. And so yeah. the unlike, just make sure that you've got some kind of competitive pu push off, you know, some mm. competitive claim uh, by showing them that everyone walks away with a story, unlike all the other busy work in your life, which is just yeah. a drain. So that's yep. also a word you can throw in there. Don't throw too many words in or you'll, you'll end up with a long book. No, we don't need a long book, man. Don't need a long book. Long books are horrible. We've got one. You're, you're publishing one soon. <laughs> uh, that was fun, JC. Any, any final yeah. thoughts? Uh, no, I like it. It was good. I'm looking forward to going to the DMV and having a horror story for you guys. I love it. All right. Well, let's do another one of these. We're going to post the video. Hopefully the video came out. We'll post it to the Sweathead Facebook channel at the very least. JC, you might post it elsewhere as well. Yeah. Uh, you can check it out. Uh, don't be afraid of sharing your work. Like this is fun. Um, I, every now and then I get little messages like DMs on Instagram from people who are like, oh, I appreciate how you and Julian can, I know it's weird talking about this, I'm talking about myself and Julian and we're both here. It's weird. But people are like, oh, I appreciate how you, he pushed back on you and then you push back on him. And it's like, I wish I could have had that relationship or I wish I could have that relationship with my people at work. And it's like, you can. It might not be easy, but there are ways, there are ways. If you're interested in finding out about the strategy, Super Size and Maker Class, you can go to strategymakerclass.com. Julian, you're putting out a lot of stuff on the internet these days. Where are you? Um, so Planning Dirty is now, I've started an academy. So that's doing um, more in-depth stuff. It's a, like coaching and um, lessons all on strategy. So you can find me there, which is planningdirty.com and the Academy's there. I'm also doing my newsletter, which is still going strong, which is planning dirty. So you can sign up from there as well, um, which is all the free content. So two places to find me. And then obviously you'll find me in real life at the uh, strategy supersizer event with you, Mark. Beautiful. In October. All right, man. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Best Catch wishes. You. Thanks for joining me on Sweat today, my man. Thank you. I miss you. Peace.